fine so um, <clears throat> in the last class so we were mainly looking at uh, how do we install Nagios right so it's not like uh, it's important or not but uh, majority of the times at the places wherever you're going to get started uh, there will always be some installation done so you have to understand more from the configuration but uh, if you're doing everything from the scratch then you need to focus more from the installation but still it's always better to understand the installation so that if there is any problem you should be able to debug it so in that case uh, as we were seeing from the architecture in Nagios there are a couple of things which we need to know so the first thing what we need to know is the directory structure so as I was saying by default Nagios will be installed under user local Nagios folder okay so once you install there will be certain folders which will be created and the reason why we need to know it that is from where Nagios will be picking up all the files for its run so in that case it would be having a bin folder wherein all the binaries which is required for Nagios itself to run would be present and there will be a folder called sbin which will be containing all the CGI files especially CGI files or nothing but a Perl file through which you can get the web page okay and then you would have a libbexe folder this is where all the plugins that is required by Nagios to run will be present okay and then you would have a share folder this is where all the PHP files specific to reports that can be used from the dashboard can be obtained okay and etc is the important folder here because this is the folder where it contains all the configuration files which will be read by Nagios and behave accordingly and finally var is the folder which contains the logs from Nagios whether Nagios is running or not or how it is running all those details will be present in a log folder here and similarly it contains a log file which specifies what is the process Nagios is currently running on or when Nagios is running internally on the Linux system it will be creating a process ID so those details can be obtained from here so if you want to see the same If you go to okay, you can see this. So, if you say bin, you can find the binaries. Then, ATC would have all the configuration files, okay, and Actually, include is just extra folder if you have some additional configuration files that you have to put. And then the SBIN will have all the CGI files. Okay, all the PHP files would be in the inside the share folder and where will contain the logs. So especially if you go now and if you say you can see this is what currently the log that is being given from the Nagios that what is running and you see the file here called status.dat this is the file which Nagios will be using for storing it as a database internally when I say database it doesn't mean that it uses exactly some kind of database but this is the file where Nagios will be automatically updating with respect to each of the updates that it gets from the check which does it on different servers so as soon as it does some check on a server the server return back the value right so that will be captured in this file and through this file Nagios will be showing all the details on the dashboard okay and uh, further this log file if you see okay you can see a process ID so that is nothing but the process ID which Nagios is running on you see this is the one 50410 this is the 
process ID which NAG uses running okay now for us the important folder on which we will be working is the etc folder okay that is where uh, you have all the config files which we need to modify and based on that we will be doing some checks so the next thing what we need to know is the config files or the configuration files because as I said, this is the important files which Nagios reads and based on what you have defined and how you have defined, Nagios will be connecting to different servers and behaving it as per that. And for that, what it does, it uses the respective plugins to perform some action. Okay, so fine so in that case let's first uh, understand what is this configuration files uh, <clears throat> one minute please so if that <clears throat> okay uh, so configuration files are the important files which uh, we have to modify so one advantage by using nagio is this when i say this configure files whenever you install Nagios that is when you compile and install Nagios Nagios creates the configuration files by default wherein it will be created as a template okay so you don't have to worry that you know you have to write everything from the scratch so Nagios creates a template of all the configuration files which is required and in that all you have to do is take the same existing structure and copy paste with the syntax is what is required so in that case if you see everything will have a template on defining a server on defining what kind of check you have to do when you have to do what kind of groups you have to form so like that there are so many things which you can define and for everything there will be certain templates which is already available and by default that template will be used to check the host on which you are working suppose if you see that uh, we install the Nagios on this VM, right? And in case if I want to monitor this VM itself, then you can use the existing template. So that's the only thing what you need to do wherein copy paste the same existing syntax from the templates and just change the values to which server is it or whatever other values that we need so that Nagios will be connecting to that server based on what you have given and does the checks accordingly so if you see in that case configuration files are nothing but they are simply flat files or you can just uh, take from windows it's nothing but simple text files which contains some kind of templates okay so every time when you run Nagios it will go to this etc folder and read all the configuration files which is available in that and based on that it will be behaving so in that case it is not like we will be dumping everything into one file itself so there are many configuration files which is uh, being put by nagios for uh, ensuring things are simple so it's just like you know uh, if you're writing program you define functions or subroutines right so you write it in separately all the common groups and you try to include it separately so in the same way here it writes all the different templates uh, into separate files and include everything together in one file so that it is easy for us to maintain it separately okay now so in that case what and all are the config files and how it works is what we need to know so whenever nagios runs nagios first checks for a file called nagios.cfg okay which will be present in the etc folder now using this file all the other configuration files will be picked up wherein cfg is just a short form for configuration okay now wherein uh, it doesn't literally matter that means that cfg is something special for configuration no it's just a normal text file which you are ending the extension with cfg because in linux there is no extension okay remember this unlike windows in linux or unix there is no extension so wherein linux or unix will be just considering this as the name of the file itself 
okay so in the that case when nagios run the first file that it tries to read is etc nagios.cfg wherein using this all the other templates or the configuration files has to be defined wherein under the etc folder there will be one more folder called objects and inside that you will be having all the supporting configuration files okay so using this nagios will try to read all the other configuration files and then based on that it will try to behave on what server to connect and which checks to do when to do how to do all those things it will be defined internally so what we're going to do is first let's start going through one by one and see how it works exactly okay so the very first file what it checks for us nagios.cfg okay so the first thing is let's go to etc folder okay so i am inside user local nagios etc and in that if you see you will see a file called nagios.cfg right so this is the very first file which nagios will be reading so if you try to read this okay now as i said this acts both as a configuration file but at the same time it is a template so if you want you can modify if not by default you can use the same thing but change all the values based on your need okay so this configuration file called nagios.cfg has all the primary definitions which is required by nagios okay so the first thing if you see it says that log underscore file wherein log underscore file is a variable which nagios is internally using and now for that there is a file that it has created so if you see this is the file which i was saying inside the folder called where right wherein all the log files about nagios run will be put in case if you don't want and if you want to put into some other folder then simply change the value here okay and then further if you see all those variables which stand with cfg underscore file defines all the configuration files which nagios has to read further after reading this nagios.cfg so in that case it is saying that you need to read a file called commands.cfg contacts.cfg time period.cfg template.cfg and further it says it also has to read localhost.cfg wherein it is not like all these files are separate files and it will execute separately but as i said these files contain some kind of configuration so nagios will read all this file accumulate the configuration what it has to do and based on that it will be running wherein why we have made it separate as the name indicates each one of them serves a different purpose and has a particular value related to the name so if you say localhost this will contain all the definition of what server exactly you want to check okay and then the time period will contain what is the specific time on which you have to connect to a server just like the cron job entry you need to specify when you need to do some check on a particular server right so those details will be there and then for example if you take commands.cfg commands.cfg will contain all those commands which nagios has to run to perform some check basically when you say commands it is nothing but which plugin has to be called for what check okay and then for calling a check you need to pass some parameters or not because sometimes you might not just run some check you might have to run some check do some maths like if you say space or memory utilization you need to set a threshold for that right so in that case you might have to pass some threshold by passing some parameters to those check so in those case all those definitions will be specified in this file called commands.cfg okay and then the contacts.cfg will say whom should be sending the mail whom should not be sending the mail or like or which group should be getting the uh, notification alerts all those details has to be set here okay so like that there will be 
multiple configuration files which you can create so all you have to do is if you are creating a new configuration files add a line for cfg underscore file and put those values here so that nagios will also read that file okay further you don't have to worry about all this uh, pre cache files okay and now as i said resource file is the file which will contain all the macros okay now what do you mean by that so just like uh, any kind of scripting or programming that you'll be using macros are nothing but variables which can be reused okay so for example if you want to reuse certain value again and again then uh, if you want to define then in every configuration file you have to define that right instead of that what you can do is you can create something called as macros and reuse it so in this file called resource.cfg you can specify all those values which you want to reuse it again and again so that in the configuration file you can simply call those variable name which will contain the values okay so after this we will go and see this wherein uh, just assume this that resource file or this resource.cfg is a file wherein in case if you have certain values to be reused you just put those values here and based on the variable what you have specified you will be reusing it in all the configuration files okay and then here status dot that is the file where as i said nagios will be storing all the monitored value that means every time when it monitors a server whatever details it does there it will be dumping it into this file called status dot that and the status update interval which is nothing but how frequently do you want this status dot that should be updated okay so here 10 means it is 10 seconds and further if you see there are so many other values which is required like nagios user specifies who is the user who has all the control to handle the nagios run and specifically the nagios group is the group based on which who will be having the control so all these definitions if you see this has been picked up when you're trying to configure and install if you remember when we, we had created all these users and we were running it so when we are creating plugin we had given all this option so because of that it is trying to pick up the value and trying to run one after the other okay so pretty much uh, this is what is required but other than that if you try to change any other values that you're seeing in this accordingly nagios would be behaving but the important things what you need to know is only those what we saw in the beginning but other than that there is one more important thing that you need to specify as this suppose if this value is turned to zero that means the log will not be putting it up so what you have to do is just come down and ensure that this log notifications is always set to one okay suppose if you don't want everything to be logged then you put it by zero but by default when you install nagios this will be set to one but in some cases when it is not set to one that is it is zero then what you have to do is you need to make sure that there are certain values which you have to enable it to one okay so that is what is pretty much needed but other than that this file has all the configurations how it has to do all those things which is not pretty much uh, important in the initial case but other than that the only important thing is how it picks up this file right so now once it does it will be reading all these files now let's try to understand what these files are one by one and what it contains everything inside it okay so before going that let me just show you what is this resource.cfg okay so now as i said resource.cfg is a optional file wherein if you want you can put some macros in it and we can reuse it okay so now here is if you see by default it is having one variable called user one okay and what is the value of that 
the value for user one that we have set is user local nagios libbxe folder so that means whenever you are trying to use some plugin rather than specifying the complete path what you can say is simply you can use this variable or macro called user one wherein this will be replacing it with this string called user local nagios libbxe okay so this is how you can use this macros to get the complete value of whatever that you have put inside this macros so in that case when you are defining a macro in nagios this is the syntax okay wherein you have to start with dollar then user one and dollar and when you are retrieving the value it will be pretty much the same wherein you say dollar user one and you get the value what you have stored inside this macros so like this any kind of value that you want to reuse it pretty much create a variable name or a macro name and put the content inside it okay fine so the important thing after this what you need to know is we'll go to objects folder and this contains all the required cfg okay so the first and the foremost thing which you need to know is the localhost.cfg wherein this is a cfg which defines what kind of servers that you are working on and how it works all those details will be present okay so for the first time it might be a little confusing but as you keep seeing it for some more time and then it will be easy for you to understand because like i said it's all templates so if you just copy paste and redefine with a particular name things will work as it is okay fine so the first thing like i said okay we had some uh, config file called nagios.cfg which will have all the definitions and everything is fine so our primary requirement is given any server we have to do some check against it right so first thing what we need to do is we need to define about that server so in that case say that uh, you have one more vm and you want to check something against it then the first thing what you need to do is you need to define the details about that host okay so that will be done in this file called localhost.cfg but is it mandatory that you should do it in this no if you want you can create your own cfg file but the only thing what you need to know is you need to follow the syntax whenever you are defining a host okay so as the name indicates here if you see define host is the syntax or the template which you should be using for defining a host okay now by default if you see it is giving us the template and localhost is the host on which you are currently running this nagios so it is giving you a template for the same server on which it is running so all you have to do is copy paste this value and modify it according to which server you want to correct uh, sorry connect so for now let's try to understand what these values are then we will try to do one check of a different server and see how it works okay so the first thing is the template so define host is the template which specifies what is the host or what is the machine which you want to connect and do some check or which is the server or the machine for which you need to do the monitoring okay so define host is the syntax and the template inside that the first thing if you see there is a word called use linux server okay wherein whenever you see something called use in nagios then that represents further a smaller template which means a template is nothing but a group of values which is being used by all the different configurations in a common way okay so we will not go completely into the templates for now but what this means is this is a name which is trying to point to a group of values which can be reused again and again so for example now you are saying that this is a server 
okay so for that server when you want to connect how you want to connect all those things you are specifying suppose you are adding one more server or your uh, data center can have 10, 20 to 25 servers now for all those 25 servers you will be putting in the same values right so instead of that what you can create in Nagios is you can group all those common values and you can create them as a template and simply use the name of the template so that all those values which you are trying to repeat can be replaced here okay so that is the purpose of a template so how do you use a template the template will be used by the word called use wherein where will be the definition for all these templates it will be present in the cfg file called template.cfg okay so we will see it further but first what's more important is to understand this definition for the host okay so like this now for now you just assume that it is using some standard template which nagios is giving and that is being defined by Linux server. So that means in case if you are going to monitor a Linux based server, then you use this definition. Okay, wherein you use this template first and whatever values it is there, it will be replaced. So other than that, what is important to define a host? So the very first thing you need to say is what is the name of the host? Okay, now since it is saying local host, which is nothing but the server, which you want to monitor okay and alias is nothing but a short name to quickly identify what is the server because what will happen is when you say host name generally in production the host name will not be like just it will be server name at the rate company name dot domain name dot com so it will be very huge so instead of that if you want to quickly identify it you can give a shorter name for that server or which machine you are trying to monitor okay and then address represents the ip address of that server which you want to connect so like this no matter how many servers you want to monitor you will be creating a separate definition like this and in that you will be adding all the corresponding values on the name of the server and then specifically the IP address so these two things are the important things which Nagios requires to monitor any server okay fine so once you have defined a host then what is that you have to do okay now fine so you have defined a host now whenever Nagios have to connect to it it will connect to that server but before that what is that you have to do after connecting to that server you need to monitor right so how will you monitor so for that you need to specify all those details so in that case all those monitoring things are called as services wherein services internally represents a particular check which you need to monitor on a particular machine okay again now for that service we again have a template okay now the difference here is when you're defining a host you will be defining it only once because there is only one host name right but for a host you might be have to do or monitor various checks so like i said you might be interested to check the uh, whether the server is up or not you might have to check whether the server has enough memory space you need to check whether uh, the load average on the server or the cpu utilization is always lower like this for a single server or a single machine you can do many checks so in in that case each one of the check correspondingly indicates a service in nagios so in that case for each host you can have different or many services so in that case the next thing after defining the host what we need to do is define the services for each of the check okay so how do you define that service so again for that if you see it has a similar template wherein if you say define service within the flow buckets whatever details that you do it will be considering for that particular server wherein try to understand you have to define a service for each 
kind of check for each server okay so that is what you're going to do so by default what we'll do is we will define a service for a particular kind of check and this can be reused by any server that you want specifically okay fine so in that case now if you see there is something again I have specified here by use wherein use represents a template which you are going to use commonly okay that again we will see but other than that what is important the first thing is the host name wherein host name says for which host you are trying to run this service okay so we are saying local host wherein this is the short name which we have defined sometime back here okay so you have to remember this for example if you use the server called XYZ then that is the server or machine against which you do have to do some monitoring so now that is the details that you will specify here so when you say host name then you will be specifying that XYZ okay so once that is done the next thing is you need to specify the details about what kind of checks you are doing okay so when you say what kind of checks then it is what it is defined by the service description wherein it just says what is that you are trying to do here it is just some small description but other than that this is not going to do anything so service description is a string which is used to just quickly identify what is the service used for okay so here if you see we are using a check for ping ping is nothing but a command or a service which checks whether you are able to communicate to the particular server okay fine so once you have set the service description the next thing is you need to specify exactly what this service has to do right so that is most important thing is that you are specifying against which server or which machine you want to run but what exactly you want to run so that will be defined using check command okay now here you need to understand this uh, how the syntax works okay so if you see you have given some values here right now what are these values so in order to understand this first let split this and see what it is so anything that you see by this exclamatory mark represents a parameter that you are passing okay try to understand this anything that you see with exclamatory mark are nothing but parameters so in this case for this service called ping you are passing two parameters okay what is that parameters this whole value is one parameter okay now maybe that this service needs some values like this okay fine let's not worry about what values you are passing for now but we are passing two parameters or two values to this particular service okay now in that case what is the exact command that you are trying to call right so that is what here it represents by check ping wherein check ping is a command which you are calling whenever you call ping that means for this host called local host you are calling a command or a check or a service called check ping for which you have specified two parameters okay and internally if you see what is this check ping again will be defined in a separate commands.cfg so if you remember there was one more configuration file called command.cfg wherein all the definition about what is this exact command does internally and whenever you are passing some parameters how it has to behave all those things will be handled so if you see this localhost.cfg is a simple file which just defines what is that you need to do okay so one by one we will go further and see all these things will be and how it behaves wherein here you are just defining the service so for this local host you are trying to do some service called check pink which gets some values or two parameters like this okay now what is this check pink check pink is a default plugin which is being given by nagios like this 
in case if you want to modify this to some other script you can do that also so we will see all those complicated things little later but for now as i said nagios gives you lot of plugins let's see that also once again so where are we so inside the nagios local user local nagios you will be having a libexe folder so as i said this is where all your plugins will be present so whatever commands that it is calling here internally if you see it is nothing but the name of the plugins that you will be using it here then that you have actually compiled and created in the last class if we saw we basically try to compile and create some plugin right so those are nothing but all this which we have created here okay so you see you have a file and simply if you want to cross check that okay now if you don't know how this works you can pretty much run it in the help mode and that will tell you what parameters that you need and how you need to run okay so here what is it saying when you are running this command it requires some parameters okay and in that if you see it is requiring a parameter for what is the warning state and what is the critical state okay so these values internally represent some warning so when it says 100 comma 20 it is not like you are passing it here it is the syntax of this plugin that it requires two values so if you see that if a value that you are trying to ping and if the value is ranging between 100 and it is always below 100 or it is ranging between 100 to 500 then it means that it is a warning so but any value which is less than 100 then it is not a warning it is fine but suppose if the value reaches 500 then that means the 500 is a bytes which you try to receive then it means that it is a critical warning so what will happen immediately when you run the ping command and then in case if you get the value which is 500 or more than that then it will assume it is as critical so that is what you will be passing the values and all this definitions that will be present in the commands.cfg wherein here you are just defining the service okay so like this there will be so many plugins which will be available what we need to understand is we need to just go through this and try to say what is the plugin that we want to work or what is the service that we want to work correspondingly what is the plugin name that is going to be used for that service okay so similarly if you see there will be lots of services which is defined so now here if you see suppose if you want to check your local disk space for the partition that you have used okay then in that case this is the plugin which is used for checking up the partition now say that uh, at some point of time you want to know how many users have connected to a server because if there are too many so uh, people who have connected to a server and they are trying to work then it might be some problem so in that case if you want to limit you can do a limit also so for that what you do there is one plugin called check local users okay what this will do it will basically try to check whether there are number of users or how many number of users have connected to a particular machine and working on that so in that case if you see the first thing is you are using some template called local service okay so we will see this template on what you have but other than that the first thing you need to say is for which server you need to do this service so in that case host name will define for which server you are trying to check it so in that case local host is the server against which you are trying to check okay then here command is the important thing which specifies what you need to check against this okay so you are saying that check local users is the command which needs to be called whenever you are calling this current users or this service okay and for that you are passing some parameters called 20 and 50 and what this parameters does even we don't know but internally by default it is giving so like this if you are creating your own service 
you are creating your own plugin then you have to specify the command what you need to call and correspondingly if you have to pass some values you will be specifying okay so like this there are so many other services which is present so like this if you see if you want to see how many services are being defined and then if you want to check if there is any load on the server and what is that load all those data will be given here so like this what is important is for each check or for each service you need to define a service for each server so the only thing what you need to understand here is suppose if you have 25 servers like I said and each of the server needs say some four to five checks to be done then you need to do 25 servers into four checks what you have to do that means for each server you need to define all the four services so the only thing what you need to do is you need to copy paste this and rewriting it so initially it might look it is a difficult thing so either if you want you can manually do it or you can simply write one script and try to reproduce the same value so in this if you say now if I add another 24 servers the only values that it will be changing is this name of the server against which you need to do right so simply if I copy paste and change this local host to some other XYZ then for that server called XYZ or machine called XYZ it will also do this check or this service so like that you can write some small script and try to quickly get the values added to the same localhost.cfg or you can simply add it in one more CFG file for each of the server so however you want you can do it but the important thing what you need to do is you have to define this same syntax or the template what you're seeing okay fine so now let's take one by one and let's go because let me not confuse you too much so let's take one service now so the first thing what we did was we tried to define a server or a host so for that we defined what is the name of the server and then you need to specify the short alias name and then the IP address and then once it is done you have to define a service so let's just take one service here so for this service if you say you need to specify for which host you want to monitor or for which machine you want to call the service and then you need to specify what exactly is that service right okay so now like I said this is not an actual plugin name but this is a command name that you are trying to call and you are trying to pass some parameters so now let's try to see the commands.cfg and see how each one has been defined so it will be present in the etc folder inside your user local nagios and inside that you have a folder called objects okay so let me make it a little wide so that it will be easy for you to see okay so here we have a file called command.cfg okay now here again if you see you will be having templates which defines what each of the command is about okay so now our interest is to check for a command called check ping right so let's quickly go to check ping okay so here if you see we have defined a command called check ping right so do you have anything else yes we have here also fine so okay they have defined only in two things now if you see this check ping is the actual plugin name that we are going to use okay so instead of that let's try to see this and try to get one okay now how do you define a command as the name indicates first you use the word called define and then the word called command so that specifies that you are actually trying to define some command okay now here for defining a command what and all values that you need 
So the first thing what you need to know is what is the name of the command that is check ping. So if you try to see internally, this is nothing but the value or the string which you have specified here. Okay, try to be clear. Now when you say check command, whatever that you have given here is the name of the command which you are trying to call. Okay, but internally that doesn't mean that you are going to execute this. It is just a string which you are trying to call. So whatever string that you give here, Nagios will come to the command.cfg and it will check for a value called command name which has the same string what you had. So suppose here if you say check, uh, check underscore ping underscore one and here if you have specified check underscore ping underscore one then it will come here exactly. Okay, so this is just the name to identify what command you are trying to call wherein that is not the exact command. Okay, try to be clear. Then what this command has to do is what the command line is going to specify. Okay, so every definition of the command needs to have two values that is one name of the command to identify and then second is what exact is the command line which you need to execute okay so now if you see here whenever you are calling this service called check ping it internally comes and executes this line okay now when it is executing this line what is it it is trying to do it is just trying to call some plugin called check ping Okay, now if you see, this is the actual plugin name. Okay, now why is it both of them has been given the same name? Because it is easy for us to identify. So now, if you always store a command name with the same name as the plugin, it is easy for us to identify saying that, okay, now this check ping is nothing but you are trying to call a plugin called check plugin. Instead of that, in case if you have given some other name that it should not be confusing. So since it is a template what Nagios is giving, it always uses the same name of the command as that of the plugin name. So every time you call a command internally, Nagios is going to call a plugin corresponding to it. So like I said, now where is all the plugin present? Plugins are present in a folder called libexe. And if you remember, we had created a macro called user1 in the resources.cfg. Now, every time you are using this C, they are trying to use the macro. So now you are actually calling a plugin which is present in the libexe folder. Okay, so this is what the exact command is doing. So for that, what you are trying to do, you are trying to pass some parameters wherein iPhone H is the first parameter which requires the name of the server against which this plugin should run. So for that, if you see, by default, there is a macro which has been created by system generated, wherein user1 is a macro which we created, but host address is a macro which Nagios knows by itself. So how does it know? Whenever you are calling the service like this, then host address is nothing but this name of the server. So now using this name, it will go up to the definition and it will try to read the IP address. So that work internally Nagios will be doing. And then second thing here, if you see, for this plugin called check ping, you need to first specify what server you want to run this command or this plugin called check ping. And then you need to specify what is the warning value and what is the critical value so whenever you are running ping command you will be getting some output so based on that you need to say whether the server is in a warning state or in a critical state or it is okay so when you specify some value here it whenever the value reaches this warning value then it will be indicating it as warning and suppose when it indicates anything lesser than that then it won't display anything Okay, so only when the value touches whatever value that you're giving or more, then it will say warning. So in the same case, if you need 
to specify a critical value also you can specify so in that case now any value that is between this value and this value will be called as warning but as soon as it touches this and anything more than this it will alert it as critical okay so we will see more about what is the status and all but for now you just have to understand this so like this if you see there are so many plugins that you have defined wherein each one of them has its own syntax so now if you see in this local host.cfc in the service you will be calling some string or the name of the command wherein what exactly this command does is internally specified by this commands.cfg file okay try to understand wherein this is just the name of the command which you are trying to invoke as a reference but internally command line is the command where exactly you specify what plugin that you are trying to use and for that what and all values that you have to use so here if you see the two values that you have passed that is after exclamatory mark if you give some value that will be taken as first parameter and after that if you give one more exclamatory and then give values then it will be considered as second parameter so that values should be taken by a standard macro called arg1 or arg1 represents the first parameter that you have passed to this definition of the command and arg2 represents the second parameter what you have passed it to this particular service or to this particular command so now if you see we have how many definitions we had a configuration called resource and then we had local host in which we had specified this particular host name and then we specified we want to do some check called pink and once again we have one more file called commands.cfg in which we will specify exactly what commands you need to call against this command that is what is the exact plugin name which you will be calling against this particular check okay so as i said it is better to have each one of them separated in separate cfgs so that it is easy for us to maintain if not if everything is present in the same file then it will be quite confusing okay now if you understand nagios.cfg is first called from nagios.cfg it calls localhost then the localhost it will then further go to this commands.cfg and resource.cfg and try to get all this values that you need okay so is it clear until now at least how you define one host and how do you define one service and for that if you see how the command will be defined internally okay i have a question but not regarding configuration uh, but it's regarding to the include directory so may i ask yeah one minute i'll explain you hello okay okay yeah before that any any questions in this so as i said it might be little confusing in the beginning but uh, this is a standard template which nagios follows so all you have to do is you know try to understand this syntax and all the flow how it works because going forward when you are trying to maintain something you will be just modifying this that's it you will not be actually uh, doing anything from new the only thing what you need to do is you just have to copy paste this and try to modify that we will take it as an example and try to do but here just for understanding i'm just going through one by one in a simplest form so that you can understand it so are you guys uh, able to get or is it quite confusing which you need to go through it again sneha hello hello okay yeah any any doubt okay yeah so what was your question 
my question regarding to the include directory uh, you told us about a include directory that extra configuration if we want then we have to configure in this directory so I want to ask that what kind of extra configuration we have to know okay that that I'll come to you later because if, uh, if I tell you now itself it will be quite confusing now all those things when you said right uh, there's SMS and uh, you want to set up some configuration additionally that you can uh, put it into that that is what it is being used okay when we are connecting to the another uh, servers to the negative servers so what about the security terms that we are connecting two servers each other so infra is also in behind sorry in mid of all both servers yeah firewall would be there so if you are not inside the same network then you will not be allowed to do so pretty much uh, you are connecting to all the servers which is present in your uh, network in the company right it will be in, inside the same mm -hmm. network okay and uh, one more question that uh, writing about the plugins you Ask, tell us something about writing about plugins so how can we write a plugins yeah we will see it slowly I mean let's first try to see how this works one by one and after that uh, we'll okay, go to the sorry. plugin okay okay sorry no problem I'll show you one by one don't worry okay, okay so Okay, so now uh, we were seeing from the commands.cfg, we saw from local uh, uh, host.cfg, right? Now I'll show you what is this templates.cfg. Okay, now if you go back, we were using this first thing is local service and then we used something called Linux server. So when I said whenever you have this term called use, it is nothing but a template, wherein template is a group of values which you can reuse it again and again okay so in that case let's try to search and see what is that definitions or the template that you have okay so okay so now so if you see there's a lot of uh, definitions what it is trying to give but to take it as a simple term now when you say define host here it is trying to say for a host definition this is the template that you're going to use okay so in that case now name represents that whatever template name that you are using for a host only so like this you can have template for different thing that doesn't mean that one template should be used for all the configuration that means you have a service you have a host you cannot use the same template for both because the values would be differing for a host you need certain values but for service you need different values okay so in that case here if you say you are defining a host name and for the host is not actually the host but it is a template internally which can be reused so in that case now when you say Linux server it is for a host which you are defining and what and all that you are seeing okay the first thing is it is saying generic host right now what is this again it is saying again use generic host that means it is internally using one more template called generic host and if you just look up this is the template first it is using and further these are the values okay so here if you see what is this template that you are using it has some values so whenever you are using this values that is the template all these values will be taken internally for this host so like this so any kind of host that you are defining if you use this value called Linux server then it will be replacing that with all these values so this means simply instead of writing all these lines every time when you create a host you simply put everything inside this template called Linux server and you are you reusing it 
and if you see what these values are the first thing you are seeing is notification is enabled so when you say notification you remember these values were present in what inside your nagios.cfg so here you have an option of overwriting whatever values that you have present in the nagios.cfg so like that nagios.cfg is going to give you a common value but you can choose for each server a particular configuration can be set or not set okay so in that case here notification enabled when it's one that means whenever something goes wrong in this server then it has to be notified okay then the second thing is event handler event handler is nothing but you are doing some service right so whenever it is changing the state from one state to other that means when you say state it might be working fine but suddenly it might not work fine or when you take back the example as uh, the check ping we were giving some value called 100 and uh, 500 for critical right suppose if the value which the server returns is less than 100 then it means it is completely fine but as soon as the value goes 100 or above 100 then the state of the server is considered as warning so in that case what will happen is the event has been changed from normal to warning and then when the value goes beyond 500 then the state gets changed from warning to critical or there is an event called correspondingly a event called critical is being triggered so event is nothing but a state when server tries to change from one state to other state okay so do you want to get notified for that or when you want to handle all those things internally by nagios is what you say one so wherever you say one that means it is enabled okay so like that the important thing which you need to know is notification period now here if you say notification period says 24 by 7 that means you need to keep getting mails throughout the day or do you want to get only the mail or the notifications for the first eight hours of the day because only on the first eight hours you will be working right the rest of the time you will not be working so like that you can specify the value okay so these are the common values which will be reused for all the servers and all these things are stored as one template called generic host and that is what you are giving it here so when you give this word called use generic host all these values will be replaced in this particular place so if you have 25 servers like i said then it will be a huge configuration file wherein you are reusing the same values again and again so instead of that you group them as a template and you put it like this okay and what other values that you have in this linux server if you see it is saying that check period is 24 bar 7 yes so now how and when you want to check that so i am saying this you want to check this other 24 bar 7 so it has to keep on checking throughout the day okay now but you haven't said when exactly you have to check okay you are saying that okay you have to check it all throughout the day but do you want to run it all the 24 bar 7 no that means what is the interval that you want to check so the check interval is going to say that when exactly you want to check okay so in that case the check interval whatever you see five this represents that every five minutes this check has to be performed or this service has to be performed or basically you have to check the host or whatever that you have defined every five minutes okay so that is what the check interval is all about now suppose if there is some problem then when is that you want to do or do you want to retry it so basically the retry interval specifies that every one minute that you need to check for the host suppose if it is not working or if it is not connecting then after one minute try to check whether it is running okay and like that the maximum check attempts which says 10 is nothing but if you try to connect to the server for 10 times and if it doesn't work then stop it but until 10 times you keep running it okay and then what is this check command so 
you try to understand here you are not trying to run a service and what is this you are trying to do you are defining a host so that means there are two things which nagios does so first thing what nagios does is every five minutes it will try to run this command called check host alive to see whether the host is alive that is the host is connectable okay then after that it will be running the service what you have defined wherein the service we have not coming it to the template but here what we are trying to see is from the host you have defined something called linux server and that is the template that we are trying to see here okay don't get confused again this is the template which you used while defining the host okay yeah can you hear me now now we can yeah okay so what i was trying to tell is this host definition we have user template so this template will be used only for the host definition wherein if you see what it means is here every five minutes nagios will be checking for the server whether it is connecting or not or whether it is actually up and running and in that case what command that it will use internally it is going to use a command called check host alive so now if you see even the host definition is using a command wherein how what is this command if you just check here check iphone host iphone alive so now if you see even this is trying to use the same plugin called check ping wherein it is hard coding some value and it is trying to check so what it does is every five minutes it will try to ping the server and if the server is pingable that means that the server is alive and it is running okay so like this it will be checking it throughout the day and for every five minutes it will try to do okay and now if you want to see all the further details like when exactly you want to send it will be trying to send notification every two hour if something goes wrong okay and now we're in here when you say the notification options dur is nothing but some state of the server against which it will be sending notification so i'll be telling you what are these states of the servers in little further so like this if you are trying to see this is nothing but a template for a server so all these values will be reused for all the servers that you are trying to check okay fine now in the same way now if you see for the service you have used a template called local service and now if you want to see this okay so here you see you have defined a template that means not us nagios has defined a default template and it is using certain values so any time for any kind of service you use this local service that means see here even for this service you are using this and even for this service you are using so any value that you are going to specify here will be replaced it so rather than writing like 10 lines here 10 lines here what we are trying to do is we are trying to group them as one template and we have put it here okay wherein what this is going to do the first thing it is saying that it is using another template called generic service and that is what you are seeing on the top and other than that what values it is saying so now it is saying that the max check attempts is four that means how many times you have to keep on checking if that command is running or not okay and then the normal check interval that is five minutes so this means every five minutes this service whatever that you have specified here right because when you use this you are internally using this value that means this service whatever you have specified here is going to be checked every five minutes okay like that this is the place where you can tweak to say that when it has to be checked so every time you use this template called local service then that service will be checked 
every five minutes against the server what you are trying to check so every five minutes what nagios will do is it will try to run this command where internally this command it is going to call some plugin so this is how nagios will be trying to connect to some server and try to run a service against the time that you have given okay so just like that if you see this generic service is again a template wherein it will be specifying some value here so instead of writing all these values again and again for all those servers like 25 servers that you're going to get and for that 25 servers you are you have four checks is what i said right so that will be like 100 services totally so instead of writing this 30 lines or 40 lines for 100 services you can group them simply and you can reuse them all those values wherein all these things are standard values which is required by nagios to work on so at least are you getting it now why do we need templates because all these things are default values which will be specified now like that every time you put some values we will be trying to reusing a template getting it hello